I am nowhere near wealthy enough in football now to compete with the likes of Man City, etc. Not just Man City, where basically it's a wealthy individual taking on what is equivalent of countries. I cannot, uh, I cannot and I will not, yeah? And that's why if somebody currently would like to come along and take this seat and sit here and, and fund Newcastle with a naught on the end with their wealth more than me, I will not st stand in Newcastle United's way. Sir John All said as well, somebody should buy this club. This is a great opportunity to make it a top six side. Do you see that? Um, I, I would... Um, if I was a foreign owner looking to invest in the Premier League, that would be one of the first clubs I'd go for. The potential for that club is through the roof. The fan base, 52,000 people they were getting in the Championship. Um, my worry is to be a top six club, though. You're going to have to look to spend another 300, 400 million to get the players to be a top six yeah, club. On top of what you're going to pay for, for the club. Pay for the club. It's, got, it's, it's a lot of money now, because like, like, he, like he just said then, you're up against countries now. Um, the wealth of the, you know, your Man Cities and, and other clubs as well is just huge. It's huge. Being a single, you know, Abramovich was able to do it, but now I think even he's realising as well. You know, you're up against certain people now that are just, wealth is just incredible. Um, and a, and the financial of... fair play was supposed to try and help. Uh, there's, they've, listen, these people have found different, different ways around it now. Um, but it's, it's made very, very difficult. But at the same time, I just, I look at it as a club, look, has Mike Ashley done a good job at, um, at Newcastle? Look, they've been relegated twice, so it hasn't been that successful, of course, I think, because a club like Newcastle United should never be, you know, shouldn't be getting relegated from the Premier League. Um, at the same time, stability, financial stability of the football club, they could probably look at it and say, it's, it's done well. Um, I'm sure he's done well, but the club is, is, is stable. I, I, I feel he's been treated a bit harshly at times. Mm. I like the him. The fans, like wanted, him. The fans wanted Kevin Keegan as manager. He gives them their wish. That doesn't go well. The fans wanted Alan Shearer to come in as caretaker manager. That didn't work out well. He's had a bit of a rip when he changed the name of the stadium and stuff like that, but... Obviously, this season quite, hasn't. Obviously, this season hasn't been the case. To change the name of the stadium yeah. in the manner that he did, and he admitted himself in that very rare interview. He's got so many things wrong. I don't think so much the Newcastle United fans are apoplectic about so much the amount of money he's put in. It's just the way that he has run the club under his stewardship. But this this isn't about Mike Ashley now. Yeah. Can you see a big investor? That there are allegedly people looking at it. Allegedly people. Um, have signed NDAs and want to take the club on? I find the problem now in football, you just look at Arsenal, when a new investor comes in, they'll see the club as a business. Uh, not bothered about winning something, just to make money, keep churning money. Uh, Arsenal have shown that they're happy to come top four every year, job done. So, knowing the Newcastle fans, would they settle for... Yeah, but, Just... but for it to be a, a business, then you have to invest. You'd have to, you'd have to invest at a club like Newcastle. Um... I think Newcastle staying in the Premier League will make money with just the TV money. Yeah, well, look, that's, that's always... It's, it's clear that's mm. why a lot, of people, you know, a lot of clubs have been bought in the Premier League, because yep. you know, there is a lot of money in our league now due to TV rights. But um, I like... I'm, if I was out there... Look, the Chinese... Like, a lot of... When money was coming from China... Um, that's sort of dried up a little bit now due to um, the government rules now. So you look at Middle East, um, Abu Dhabi, take, you know, obviously they're taking with Manchester City, so with, you know, Qatar, PSG. So a lot of those money from the Middle East have been taken up, really. They've gone into clubs already. Um, so maybe America, maybe that's probably the route for a club like Newcastle. But if they're willing to invest, I'm telling you that now, if they go it and they go it, they do it well. It's a really good club, and they could, you know, look. It's very difficult to ever get like your Manchester United and Liverpool's because they've had 50, 60 years of success. There's a reason why they're supported all the way around the world because of European cups and winning leagues. It take a long time for a member to get to that stature. But you've got to make a start somewhere. And I'll yeah. be honest, I've spoken to quite a few Newcastle fans. I was on the train with uh, quite a lot after the Brighton game, 
And they said they're fed up, the Newcastle fans, or a large number of them, this reputation that they believe they have a right to win a trophy or they belong inside Liverpool Manchester United. They said that it's a myth. Yeah. They just want to support their team and they want their team to do well. They, d they do not believe they have any divine right. I disagree. <laughs> I, I disagree. Uh, being there, um, I think they expect to be up there. I'm not saying winning the league, but I think the fans think they're a, a Champions League team. I honestly believe that. Um, they were spoilt with, the, uh, with Kevin Keegan. Um, we say spoilt, they went in a direction and then did that. Yeah, well, they, they were spoilt with Bobby Robson in a, in a way. He exceeded expectations. But that was when, especially with the Kevin Keegan, Newcastle broke the world record transfer fee mm. with the funds. They just cannot do that now unless, as he said, a massive investor comes in. Um, but yeah. It, the club's got so much potential. Um, I, I would love to see them do well and get back up in the Champions League and competing. OK, here's a good question for you then. Mm. Under Rafa Benitez, with a proposed take takeover, is European football a realistic achievement for Newcastle? Yeah, we're at it already. We're going again. Mm. Well, why not? It's a decent question. <laughs> it's, it's straight away, it's a jump. Look, Newcastle... With new owners and keep Rafa I, in place. I said with Rafa, I said with Rafa it, it was a blessing in disguise, um, Newcastle going down when Rafa came on for that short period because I said he will be the first manager, I think, who will have the clout to say to Mike Ashley, I'm running the club top to bottom. I think every other manager who's worked under Mike Ashley, yeah. I don't think they bought the players and stuff like that. So this season's come as a bit of a surprise to me that they haven't invested because I thought... If they were going to invest, Rafa Benitez was the manager who could, who had the power and well, the control to get that from. It may well be that he believes there's a, a takeover in the offing and he knows he's got the feel for the club that you two were just embracing. OK, moving on.